last year, I had a problem. And actually, it was around the same time that I came to Elite Camp last year. Who was here last year? Woo! Elite Camp, right? So anyway, here's my problem. I'm publishing content that people were liking. Anyone seen Backlinko? It's good stuff, right? And despite the fact that I was getting comments, I was getting shares, it was ranking in search engines, all that good stuff, on the surface, everything was great, right? But here was the problem. Almost nobody was converting into email subscribers. And for my business, which is information products, that's basically my entire business right there. So for you, 1.3%, 2.3%, no difference. But for me, this conversion rate was actually costing me hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. So on the surface, everything was good. I was like one of those guys that drives a Bentley and wears a Rolex. And when you go to his house, he actually sleeps on a mattress on the floor and eats ramen noodles for dinner every night. That was basically my world. Welcome to last year. <laughs> so, and trust me, the thing was, the funny thing about the email list, is that it wasn't like I wasn't trying. I wasn't one of those people that had a little form in the top right corner. Sign up for my newsletter. I was really trying. I have this huge feature box above the fold of my homepage. You cannot miss this thing when you come to backlinko.com. And if for some reason you didn't go to the homepage and you went to a blog post, there was a sidebar opt-in form. So it's in the sidebar, not many people see it, but it was there on every page. And if you missed that one, and you got to a bottom, the bottom of a post, you got another call to action to sign up. So there were forms everywhere. You couldn't miss them. And despite that, like I said, my conversion rate was only 1.3%. So I was kind of lost, right? I'm trying all this stuff. This is my conversion rate. So now I want to turn it over to you for a second, because I'm curious about where you're at. We're going to work with this number as we go through the talk. So, What's your current conversion rate right now for a site that you run, that you collect emails, or for a client where you're in charge of turning their traffic to content into emails? So who here is between zero and 1%? Come on, it's okay. <laughs> Let's face it. This is pretty average, right? This is where I find most people are, even if they focus on email. And who here is between 1% and 3%? Anybody? This is getting good, right? This is into like above average territory. And who here is like a baller? Just 3% plus, just crushing it with email. Okay, we, got, we need to talk later. That's pretty amazing. And who here has no idea? They just came here to meet Estonian girls. <laughs> Anyone? Okay, thought it was just me, but I'm glad to see that it's not. So you want to write that number down on an app, on a Word document, whatever you use. Because this is the number we're going to keep in mind, and you're going to see how you can boost it up in a couple minutes, actually. So back to my problem, 1.3%, losing money. And after using the strategies I'm about to share with you today, here's where it went in six weeks. So from 1.3% to 3.68%, and I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. So back to my problem, 1.3%, and I have forms everywhere. What's going on? Well, the more marketers I talk to, the more I realize that it doesn't really matter how many forms you have on your site if you don't know why people put their email into that form. And I talk to these marketers who have been, you know, OGs in the game. They've been doing marketing for 15 years, 10 years, and they told me it's harder than ever to get emails. Back in the day, you could give away a free report, a white paper, a mini course. Anyone remember that stuff? Free reports were like amazing. Just offer a free report and people would enter their email. Well, clearly those days are gone, right? Because people cling to their emails harder than ever. And it's, we don't really know how to get emails out of people. So before I show you the strategies that I use to get from 1.3% to about 3.5%, I want to show you a quick win that I was using back when I had 1.3%, but one of the few things that was actually working for me and something you can implement literally today. So there's a page in your site that a lot of people visit when they get there, but it's a page that people don't tend to visit from Google, from Twitter, or Facebook. When they get to your site, it's one of the most visited pages on your site. Anyone know what that page is? Anyone? About page. Beautiful, exactly. Your about page. So you're not going to get a lot of traffic to your about page from search engines or things like that. But for people that are on your site, they tend to click on that about button a lot of the times. But most importantly, it's not just anybody that clicks on the about page, right? These are people that like you. They read something. This is cool. I wonder who wrote this. They click on it. They want to find out more. Very few people read something online and think, this is terrible. I wonder what idiot wrote this, and they click in the About page to find out more. 
right? These are people that actually like you. They're like, what's going on? Let's see what they're all about. So here, to get put in perspective, site-wide 1.3%. Here's my about page conversion rate. 6%. And it has nothing to do with any ninja conversion stuff. I didn't hire a peep. <laughs> pep, sorry. I didn't hire a pep. <laughs> the one time I call you peep in the whole life, of course. It's now. So I didn't do anything ninja. Basically, I have a form in the middle of my about page. So you read a little bit. Call to action to subscribe. And another one at the end. That's literally it. And that converts at 6%. And it's something you can implement right away. Because remember, when you put forms in your about page, you're really giving people what they want, right? They want to learn more about you. And you're just giving them an opportunity to do that. That's why it converts so well. So that's all well and good, right? I've got a page working for me. The problem is, what about the thousands of people that didn't go to my about page, right? What about someone who saw a link on Twitter or Facebook? They click on it. Then they read a blog post and click away, right? What about those people, which is most people, right? How can I get them to convert? And it was about this time that I met Noah Kagan. We all know very well. And I told him about my problem. I said, Noah, look, I'm getting traffic, but they're not converting into email subscribers. What do I do? And I knew that email, uh, he had built an email list at AppSumo of a million, at OKDork of 50,000. He'd been an entrepreneur for a decade, was at Facebook and Mint, had been an entrepreneur for a decade, and I knew he would bust out some Yoda wisdom for me. And I knew he would just drop a knowledge bomb when I asked him this question. And here's what he said. Dude, you need to use a pop-up. <laughs> So anyone who knows Noah knows it's true. So pop-ups, let's talk about them. Let's be honest, right? Who hates them? They're annoying, right? My God. My God. Who would never use one on their site, ever, no matter how many emails you got? OK. So anyway, that's kind of how I felt, actually, last year. So my first instinct when Noah told me to use a pop-up was no. Not using one of those stupid, annoying pop-ups on my site. Don't need the hate mail. And I don't want to get a couple extra subscribers. It's not worth it. So here's my little plan. I also like Noah, and I want him to like me. So I don't just want to ignore his advice. I don't want to say, no, I'm not going to try it. So I figured I'd give it a 24-hour trial. I'd install Sumo Me, put a pop-up on my site, and when I got hate mail and two extra subscribers per day, I'd take it down and say, Noah, thank you for the advice. It's just not for me, this pop-up thing. So I created this simple pop-up in like two seconds, because I never planned on keeping it. I just put it up, went to bed, and about 24 hours, the next afternoon, I checked. Actually, I logged into WordPress just to delete the plugin. So, but I thought, before I do that, yeah, exactly, right? Hey, we're being honest here. So, but before I delete it, let me just see how it did, right? See how many, if I got two extra subscribers, three extra subscribers. I mean, it was really popping up in front of people. Should get a couple extra. And here's my conversion rate. It's like 4% plus. I was at 1.5%, and I installed this stupid little box on my site, <laughs> and it was 4%. And needless to say, I've never looked back from that day. I've never stopped using a pop-up. And over the last year or so, I've learned some strategies that you can use to make pop-ups less annoying and more effective, which I think everyone wants with pop-ups. So first, exit intent pop-ups. Everyone knows what this technology is, exit intent. It's been around, right? Um, so basically, when someone's going to leave your site, that's the only time it pops up. And for me, they should almost have a different name than pop-ups, because they're so much less annoying than when you're reading, when it just, you scroll at a certain point, and boom, it interrupts you. Right? You're going to leave anyway, so you might as well pitch them something. So for, for this alone, this basically decreases the annoyance level by like 90%. So if you're not using this, I highly recommend it. Also. No matter what pop-up you use, whether it's exit intent or the annoying kind, you want to make sure that you pitch something that people actually want and care about. And this is an example of what not to do. A lot of people do social proof to try to build their email list. It's never worked for me, but more importantly, if someone's reading an article, actually I saw this when I, I took a screenshot because I was on the search engine journal, trying to read about SEO, trying to get some higher rankings, more traffic, and all of a sudden it says join 25,112 marketers and counting. Why would I care? how many marketers are on their email list. That's all about what they want, right? They want me to become 25,113. It doesn't really matter that I want to learn about SEO. That's clearly not the way to go, but I see a lot of people do this to pitch a newsletter. So what should you do instead? 
Well, this is, again, actually the similar copy that I used just for my test. Now, this isn't amazing, right? This isn't giving away some super targeted offer to anyone, but it's want more traffic, sign up for the free newsletter and get exclusive strategies. So even if the person X's it out, they're slightly less annoyed because they figure, okay, this is something I might have been interested in, but they close it out. So there's a little empathy there. And when you include a pitch that actually they want, not only will you get more subscribers, they'll be less annoyed, and it's basically because you're giving them what they want. So let me give you a quick pro tip. So you want to test fun, upbeat call to actions in your buttons. On, this is especially important on pop-ups, right? You can test this on any form on your website. Um, subscribe or sign up typically don't convert well, but especially on a pop-up, right? Because you might have interrupted someone. You might have annoyed somebody. So you want to take that edge off a little bit. And you can so easily do that. You can say things like, oh, I'm in. Let's do that. I want to lose weight. I want more subscribers. I want more traffic. Because when someone sees a pop-up, that anxiety level rises a little bit. And when they're going to enter an email into a form, that anxiety is even up more, right? But when you have this fun, upbeat copy, especially in the call to action, it chills them out a little bit, and they're more likely to enter the email. So if you're not ready for a pop-up, this is what I like to call pop-up light. So you're not really ready for a pop-up. There's a scroll box that is a Sumo Me feature. HubSpot also uses it. And it basically scrolls up from the bottom of the screen. And it's not quite as intrusive, right? It doesn't block anything. It converts great for me. And the problem is you can only set it to show when someone scrolls past a certain point. So unless you put it at like 1%, not that many people see it, and you don't get that many subscribers. So for the people that do see it, it's great, but you don't get as many as with a pop-up. OK, so now I want to turn it over to you again. Think of something in a pop-up that you could offer that's actually valuable. So not just that they get free updates, right? Let's face it, that's lame, right? You get, or that they get an email every time you publish a post, or that you should just sign up for the newsletter. This is what most people do. So think of something of value that you could offer. It doesn't have to be an ebook. It doesn't have to be a report. Just anything, literally anything. Just something exclusive or even the fact that they can get more traffic. Make it benefit-oriented. Okay, here's some examples. So before, if you wrote it down, great. If not, here's another one from Social Triggers. How to get 5,000 subscribers for free. Free ebook. Super simple to put together. It's basically blog posts put in PDF, and you're done. Another example from 4-Hour Workweek. Top five reasons to be a jack of all trades. You see, these are big successful sites, and when they pop up, they make it worth it. If you're going to annoy someone, you want to make it worthwhile, right? 30 days to be a better man. I mean, I don't need that. But just for anyone that might, <laughs> it's something to sign up for. I thought it was cool. I clicked it out. I was like, I'm good there. OK. So now that we wrote that down, let's keep going. So things are moving in the right direction for me, finally. I have all these forms, work converting, no stage advice save the day. But what about all those people that didn't see the pop-up, right? Or what about the 96% of people that saw the pop-up and said, nope, and they closed it out? How could I get those people to subscribe? And it's about this time that I came across this blog post called Best Fiverr Gigs of 2014. Anyone use Fiverr.com? All right, I said, wow, a lot of damn. Some ballers in the house, obviously. <laughs> so anyway, this post, on the surface, was nothing remarkable. It was this person's favorite Fiverr gigs for marketing. Things like transcription services, creating banner ads, things like that. Just another article you read, and you close, close it and don't think about it again. There's something interesting in this article that at that point I had never seen before. And it was when you scroll to the bottom, you could click and get the top 20 Fiverr gigs. So basically she cut her post in half, right? She had 10 you could get for free. And if you wanted all 20, you had to enter your email. So I thought this is interesting. This is cool. And I even saw the author, Kim Roach, say that this is working really well for her. She said that it you know, was significantly more subscribers than just having a generic opt-in form. But I thought, it's just too much work, you know? I'm not going to take something out of my content, put it behind an email, just to get a couple extra subscribers. It doesn't make sense. For every single post you put out, you have to create something unique. I'm not going to do that. A few weeks later, I came across this post. Anyone know what site this is? Video Fruit, right. Brian Harris, Video Fruit. Great site. And I noticed that he was doing something similar. He had created a bonus lesson that shows you how to do something. So for pretty much every post, it stood alone, right? It was comprehensive. He didn't cut it in half. He created something complementary. So it's either a bonus lesson. In this case, this is a post about productivity. So you can read it, be more productive. And at the end, there's a video that shows you how he uses Google Calendar to be more productive. He just schedules all his stuff. 
So if you read about productivity or in the move for productivity, you see this offer, it's a no-brainer to sign up, just to give your email and you get access to this. Here's another example. This is all about how to, um, how to create a service business out of a blog post. So you read a blog post that tells you how to do something, and there's so many marketers that are just too lazy to implement it, right? And if you can implement it for, it, for that person, you'll make a ton of money. But which articles should you pick? Well, it's got 50 for you right here that you can just turn into a service business. Really high value, right? And all you have to do is enter email. Again, I thought too much work, right? I'm not going to create a unique resource for every single blog post on my site. That's insane. So I was talking to him one day on Skype. I was like, Brian, how's that bonus working out for you? You're really getting that many extra subscribers? Here's what he said. My average blog post conversion rate is 10%, and some are converting at 30%. I mean, this is good for a squeeze page. But for a blog post, it was like, I couldn't believe it. Right? 10% to 30% on a blog post, it's amazing. Now, now that his traffic has increased and the stuff, it's gone down. But the point is that it was leaps and bounds above what I was doing. And I realized why I wasn't getting people to enter their emails into the forum. Because whether you came to my site and you're reading about keyword research or link building or on-page SEO or blogging or content, you got the same pitch. It was just a generic pitch for everyone that came to my site. And the reason I actually used this form that was generic is because I noticed that other big blogs are doing it. I looked at other big blogs and I was like, well, they're doing it. They don't create a custom form for everything, so I'll just do the same thing and put it at the bottom of every post. And it reminds me of a Pep Lodge quote. <laughs> that was pretty much me, right? I was basically copying my competitors and I had these two people tell me that they were crushing it with this strategy and I was ignoring them. So once I realized this, I decided to give it a try. So I implemented this strategy on a post called Google's 200 Ranking Factors, The Complete List. So this is a huge post, gets a ton of traffic. In fact, it brings in 15,000 unique visitors a month, just one post, right? This is a lot. A lot of blogs don't get 15,000 unique visitors a month. But again, that was the Bentley and the Rolex, right? That was me balling. Gets 15,000 uniques a month, I'm the man. Well, look at the conversion rate, 0.39%. That's the ramen noodles and the mattress on the floor, right? <laughs> That's kind of the reality of the situation. So it brought in a lot of traffic, more than any other page on my site, but it also converted the worst. So to my bottom line, it actually wasn't doing very much. And after I implemented what I call the content upgrade, this is what happened overnight using this one strategy. So what did I do and how can you do the same thing? So if you're interested in getting more conversions, I'm going to walk you step by step on how to do it. So first, you want to find a page that brings in a lot of traffic. So you want to find a page that's those evergreen pages that maybe you published it two years ago, maybe you published it five years ago. It's just bringing in traffic from Google, from Facebook, from Twitter. It's those evergreen posts that are always bringing in new visitors all the time because this does take work, right? It takes extra work. So you want to make sure you get the most bang for your buck for it, and you want to start with your highest traffic post, and that's what I did. Next, you want to think of one way you could make that post better. And a great way to do that is to look at comments that you get. So in my case, I had basically Justin's and Kristen's commenting. I had some other people that were saying, you know, it was all lies. But <laughs> for the people that liked the post, they're basically Justin and Kristen. Justin was saying, it's cool, but it's just too much information. It's overwhelming. I don't even know where to begin with this thing. Do you have kind of like just the things I should take away? And I had a lot of Kristen's. We're saying, this is a great resource, but I don't want to keep going back to your site over and over and over again just to reference it. So do you have this in a PDF format? So I took basically Justin's advice and Kristen's advice, and I put it together in a PDF, Google Ranking Factors Checklist. So it took the 10 most important factors, in my opinion, and condensed them into basically actionable steps. So you just go to the first one, you can implement it, yada, 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 right? It's pretty high value. I just took the best parts. I didn't add anything new. I didn't take anything out of the post. I sort of condensed what was there. And to pitch the post, which is actually the devil's in the details with how you pitch it, and I'll show you more examples of this in a minute, is that this yellow box after the intro, this gets by far the highest click-through rate because it's at the top. And it basically just says, download the free checklist. And when you click on that, a lead box appears. Anyone see lead boxes by lead pages? Right? It's cool. It's helpful. So if you go to the bottom, there's another image. And when you click either of those, the lead box appears and you enter your email. And I like this because some, I've seen some people put forms in the content. That just looks unsightly, right? It's like putting graffiti on your blog post. You have this giant form. This way, it just looks like a normal link. 
And the only people that see the form are people who are potentially interested in signing up anyway. So I think it looks a lot better, and it also converts really well. Okay, so like I said, after I used it, literally overnight, went from less than half a percent to 5.4 percent. And it's still about that right now. It's been uh, almost a year. And in the first nine months that I launched this, it brought in almost 8,000 new subscribers to my email list, which is crazy. One page, 8,000 subscribers. And it, I was bringing in maybe like over nine months, a few hundred before. Made a huge difference. Okay, so now it's time to identify one post, that one high traffic post. And then you want to think of one way that you could make it more valuable. So what could you add to it? It's good like it is, but what could you add to make it more valuable? Here are some ideas. So a checklist is what I like to use just because they're easy to put together. Like Noah said, they're the PDFs you never read. <laughs> so you can create one of those. Also, I've seen some people do creative stuff, like a tutorial like Brian Harris had, right? He had the post about productivity, and then he had a tutorial about how to do one aspect of that in a lot of detail. I've also tested this. This is crazy. I've created PDF versions of the post, and that actually converts just as well as a checklist. It's obviously a lot easier to put together, because there's a lot of people like Kristen, right, who are like, this is cool, but it's just a lot of information. Do you have this in a PDF that I can take with me? You don't even have to add anything to it. And depending on your format, right, if you do videos or podcasts or whatever, I've seen transcripts work well too. So that's going well, right? All of a sudden, I'm starting to do well. Moving in the right direction. But the problem is, what about all those people that didn't read that post? That post is kind of a special case. It was like 6,000 words, 200 ranking factors, really overwhelming. That's where a checklist could be really helpful. But would this work for like a case study or a list post or things like that? So I decided to test it out. I went back to my 15 most high traffic posts. So after that one, I went to the next 15. I just basically looked at it as a first time visitor coming from Google. And I basically answered the question I just asked you. How can I give someone reading this what they want that's not already there? So after they read it, what's the next step where they think, all right, to implement this, I need X. And just hooking them up with that. Anyone sell information products like courses and eBooks? No? Well, it's like a bonus. Think of it like that. So when you sell an information product, a lot of time you give a bonus that helps them implement it. So let's say they, it's a weight loss product. A lot of times the bonus will be like just, just how to avoid sweets because that's the one thing that's preventing them from actually implementing the advice from your course. You can look at it the same way. So I realize my content tends to be really long, 4,000 words, 5,000 words. It's over, it, for some people, it's very overwhelming. Some people love it. But for a lot of people, it's very overwhelming. So I realized that checklists are perfect. They actually add a lot of value because they condense what's there. Even though I'm not really adding anything, it does add some value because you can just take that away from you, with you and actually implement the advice and not have to comb through 5,000 words when you're ready. So the same exact thing. Yellow box at the top, cloud image at the bottom, and my conversion rate topped out at 3.68%, thanks to the pop-up and the strategy in six weeks. So you might be wondering, OK, you know, the, buzz, the example I showed you from the top Fiverr gigs, that's a marketing blog. Brian Harris at Video Fruit is a marketing blog. I run a marketing blog. What if I run a site about fitness? Or I have a client that has a site about personal finance, or maybe personal development? Or what if I run isitchristmas.com? Has anyone seen this site before? You literally go to it, and it says no. That's the whole site. Except, obviously, on Christmas, right? It says yes. <laughs> but that's literally the entire site. It's amazing that someone pays for hosting for this thing. So OK, so content upgrade may not work so well for this site, right? No, but get notified when, when, <laughs> when Christmas is coming next, right? Be the first to know. OK, so that's the one site that I might not work at. But for most sites, it works well. And I want to show you two real-life case studies of people that implemented this advice outside of the marketing space. I'm going to show you what they did, their results, and a few twists they added to the process to make it more effective. So first we have Josh Thompson, who, ran a, who runs a site called MyGolfTutor.com. He's actually a former golf pro. And like me, he had forms everywhere on his site. So he had this feature box that you can see at the top here, not just on the home page like I do, but on every post on his site. So no matter where you went, above the fold is taken up by this massive form. You really can't miss it. And he also had the sidebar form, and he also had links all over his site. And when you clicked on them, you went to a squeeze page like this, which looks like lead pages. And despite all that, what do you think his conversion rate was with all these forms on blog posts, people that land on a blog post? 
Yeah, about half a percent. I think that's pretty normal. So site-wide, you may get some bumps from your about page or your home page or a squeeze page. But for people that land on blog posts, the conversion rate was about half a percent. So what did he do? Well, he literally followed the same process that I laid out for you. First, he identified a post that was bringing in a lot of traffic. In this case, it was how to hit a draw in three simple steps. Now, I don't know anything about golf. I don't exactly know what, how to hit, what hitting a draw is, but it's a type of shot from what I understand. And it was ranking number one in Google for how to hit a draw, I think, bringing in a ton of traffic. But again, converting at half a percent. So about for every 200 people that visited that post, one actually entered their email. So for you guys that have e-commerce conversion rates of like 5%, there was a guy who had something crazy, like 6%. I mean, this guy couldn't even get one out of 200 to enter their email. And I find this pretty common. So he went to that post and he thought, how can I give someone reading this what they want? Someone who wants to hit a draw shot, they read this post, what do they really want to get out of this? Or how can I help them implement this? So he created this simple checklist. It looks kind of ghetto, right? But actually, people love this thing, he told me. He said he got so, so much feedback from readers that were saying they love this. They actually took it to the driving range with them. So he created this simple checklist that just cut out all the fluff, all the filler, and it was exactly what you need to do to hit a draw shot. So he did the same exact thing like I recommended, yellow box at the top. He actually stole the download image from me. And uh, I'll show you his results in a second. But before I do, I want to give you a little pro tip. This is pretty cool. I've, done, I've tested this with some information products, it's great if you sell something invisible. So if you give away something as a content upgrade or even just as a free report, test creating a mental movie in their mind. Because when I say, oh, I'm going to give you a checklist, what enters your mind? Maybe it's hard. Like, it's kind of hard to picture. I mean, maybe you have some images in your mind, but it's not as tangible as it could be. So speaking of stealing, I stole this from OK Dork. Easily save as a PDF or print for daily use. I love this, right? Because when you say checklist, it could mean a million things. But you can actually picture yourself saving it to your desktop, because we've all done that. And you can even think about printing it out. And what this does is it makes your resource sound like a thing, which is good, right? Because when it seems like a thing, people are more likely to subscribe, because it increases the perceived value. And here's actually what Josh did after people started telling them they were taking it to the driving range. This is great to take to the driving range and practice. How cool is that, right? So if you're reading this, and you want to hit a draw better, and you think, OK, I can actually picture someone putting this in their pocket, going to the driving range, taking it out and reading it as they're about to hit a shot. That's a mental movie. And that worked really well for him when he added that. So his conversion rate overnight literally went from about half a percent to 3% using the strategy. Pretty amazing, right? And it only took him about an hour from start to finish to come up with the resource, create it, and sign up for lead pages and add to his site. OK, next example. Let's switch gears a little bit. This is Chris Huntley from eLifeTools.com. In his site, he helps insurance agents basically make more money from getting more clients or making more from every client. And he runs this site that teaches people how to do it. And just like Chris, or just like Josh, just like me, just like most people, right? he had a post that was doing well, bringing in traffic all the time. And this post was teaching people how to set up this lead gen software called CompuLife. And it was kind of advanced. It was like how he did it because he's done a lot of this. So it's how to set it up the right way to make the most money and get the most conversions, stuff like that. Here's what Chris had to say about this post and every other post on his site. See this green text right here? Can anyone relate to that who runs a site? This sounds familiar to everybody, right? It seems like they read it and they click away. Freeloaders, right? <laughs> that seems to be pretty much everyone who visits a blog. So what did he do? Oh, before I tell you that, so his conversion was actually 1%, which is really good for blog post content, right? His content was converting at 1%. So he went back to the post, and he added a checklist. But this is a little bit different. This wasn't just summarizing the post. This actually told people how to install the software. So the post was teaching you how to optimize it, basically. And there are a lot of people that were leaving comments saying, like, I don't even know how to set this thing up. Never mind, optimize it. So he created this checklist that taught people how to set it up in the first place. Basically. He gave them what they wanted, right? There are a bunch of people that were like, I can't use this information yet. He gave them something that would help them do it. And lo and behold, they subscribed. Now, before I show you his exact results, let me give you a little pro tip from what I've tested and from what I've found. And it's to give people 100% exclusive content in your content upgrade. So here's an example from Backlinko of not exclusive content, right? This is the checklist that I talked about. It adds value, kind of, 
but nothing exclusive in there. You get the checklist that basically summarizes what you can get in the blog post already. So for the people that click on that link and that box appears, the people that click on that link and the box appears, about half actually enter their email. So not bad, right? For people, most people that click the link don't even know a box is going to appear. They think they're going to get the checklist right away. So that's actually pretty good. But still, what happens when you add something exclusive? So this is from a, a post on my site called YouTube SEO, The Ultimate Guide. And it teaches you how to optimize videos for SEO. And like the other post, it has a checklist, just like every, most posts on my site. So it has a checklist, great. I can take away some stuff from here. But it also includes two bonus marketing techniques not found in the post. That shouldn't make a big difference, right? Just two stupid techniques that you could probably find anywhere else. Well, here's what actually happens when people click on that link. Right, 25% more people actually convert on this one just by adding two bonus YouTube marketing techniques. So this is a great way when you go back to the post and think, what could I add to make this better? Or what would someone reading this want? A lot of times to enter their email, they want something exclusive. That's not really unreasonable. So if you give it to them, they're more likely to subscribe. So you want to write down one exclusive you could offer as a content upgrade. So something that's not already there, that you could add. So for, depending on what you're doing, it might already be a, something extra. But in a lot of cases, if you're giving away like checklists or things like that, it's not. So when you add this exclusive, as you can see, conversion rate increases a lot. Here are some ideas for you. So bonus techniques like I showed you, just two bonus techniques to a PDF increased by 25%. That's actually what I recommend because it's so easy. You could also have a link to case studies. So I have one of these for my post. I have a bonus section. And it's just like you get case studies and the checklist. And I just link out to case studies of people using a strategy around the web. Converts great. Or a tutorial or a swipe file. Swipe files are also good. If you're in the marketing space, people love swipe files, right? Because it's like you spent years basically copying people's stuff, and you have it all in one Evernote. And when you send it to them, it gives them basically years of research with just having to enter their email. Super high value and easy to put together because you probably already have it. And his conversion rate went from 1% to 6% on that blog post just from adding the content upgrade. That's how powerful the strategy is. So now that I've, my conversions are going up, life is good. My email list is growing. My revenue is growing. And because I have this stuff working for me all the time, I can pretty much travel around, and my email list builds itself. I don't have to hustle for every subscriber that comes in. And it's really all because I discovered the secret to turning content into conversions. And that's giving people what they want. Thank you. Some seriously good shit here. Uh, we have a lot of questions. And okay. in order to tackle them all, maybe we'll try to be more concise with the answers. All right, first one. Do you use pop-ups and exit intent combined on the same site? Well, I use exit and see, I'm with you. I think they should be different names. So I just use exit intent. I don't use regular pop-ups. That's concise? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> um, your condensed PDF checklist, et cetera, those designs are brilliant. Did you hire a designer or do it yourself? Yes, I hired a designer on Elance. It cost about uh, $80 per checklist. But like I showed you, Josh's from the Gulf site. That was pretty basic, and it worked well. The reason I like to go the extra mile with design is because that new subscriber signs up, and they, when they do open the checklist, they're kind of impressed. Just like, who is that? Who asked that question? They look nice, right? So when they see it, they think, wow, this is cool. Like, actually, it was worth giving my email for once. So I figure it, it's a good way to start off the relationship with somebody. How soon should pop-ups pop? Well, there's no hard and fast rule. But I just like exit intent. That way you don't have to worry about that stuff pretty much. It's when people are going to leave your site. You say, OK, one last chance to get something cool. So I don't like to do it after a certain amount of time, because a lot of times they'll open your article in a tab, go watch something else. And when they come back, the pop-up's there. And that's the first thing they see. And a lot of times, even with exit intent, there's false positives of people not really leaving, and it comes up. So when you use that, you minimize that. Uh, can you uh, recommend the service to create those checklists and PDFs? You know, uh, I just hired a freelancer on Elance. A lot of people ask me that. I wish there was some software to make it easy, but I'm not a designer. So I just basically hire someone. 
And you could just send them mine. You could just sign up for some of the content upgrades at Backlinko and be like, make something like this. And they'll know what to do. What are your favorite exit intent pop-up platforms? Well, obviously, SumoMe is what I use now. But I also use OptinMonster, and that was also quite good. So those two are good. Uh, does offering a PDF or whatever as, a, as an offer, is, does that count as permission marketing? Uh, kind of. It's kind of a gray area, right? I feel like a lot of people ask me that. They think, OK, when they sign up for the PDF, they don't really know they're also joining your general newsletter. But you can also make that clear in your copy. So before they confirm, be like, before you confirm your email, like for the, I have an almost done page. So when you sign up for the list, you get almost done, you have to confirm your email. I always say, before you get the checklist and updates and da 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 da. And then when you email them after they confirm, you can also remind them, be like, look, I'm also going to send you things once a week, an update from a newsletter, and things like that. So you're very transparent about it. But it's also, if they're entering the email in a form, they kind of should know that it's going to be more than just that PDF. How do you implement this for e-commerce? Uh, for e-commerce, you know, I've heard some people have trying this for creative stuff. So if they're seeing some tennis, tennis rackets, you could offer them like their top 10 tennis rackets rated by weight and have them sign up for the email list through that rather than like a generic $5 coupon. It's targeted to the products that they're looking at. But I haven't seen so many people try that. There's a, a world for that. Uh, you said you considered pop-ups, and should I do it, should I not do it? Were there any things that you considered and ended up not trying? No, because at this point, I was pretty desperate. So I had, like, tried everything. So pretty much if someone had an idea, it didn't matter if it was like what it was, I was ready to give it a go. What does your room look like now? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I have a nice IKEA bed. And uh, yeah, upgraded. Premium ramen noodles now. Proud to say. <laughs> uh, Pop-ups work well on desktops. W what about mobile phones? Well, they work actually really well on mobile phones, too. I've seen the conversion rate pretty consistent. It just has to be responsive. And most of them, like OptinMonster and Bounce Exchange and SumoMe are responsive. Uh, from my personal experience, what distinguishes the blog posts that get the most traffic and uh, conversion rates from the ones that get you know, low conversions? I mean, that's a whole talk, right? Uh, but in general, there is a great article on OKDork that's BuzzSumo analyzed 100 million articles and basically identified what got them shared. And a lot of things were content length. I find that any time you have super practical, actionable stuff in a post, it's almost better than, almost always better than here's what I think about X. So if you do those two things, you're actually ahead of the game. Uh, I tried the content upgrade. Didn't work. Now what? Yeah, just give up, honestly. You're done. Um, well, like I said, the devil's in the details. If you pitched it with the yellow box, who asked that question? It's OK. Oh, see, uh, did you try the yellow box at the top and the cloud image at the bottom? Yeah. Well, you can just go to the site. It's on every post now, pretty much. But it has, it, like I said, the devil's in the details a little bit in how you do it. So if you don't have this, part of the reason it works, a lot of people are like, oh, it's because you're giving them something exclusive. Most people just give away a generic report. But a huge part of the reason it works is because you can't miss it, right? You're taking this call to action from on the periphery of your site, and you're putting, like, boom, where they can't miss it. And then at the end of the post, they also see it again. Boom. So there's two calls to action. So if, I don't know, did you have it like this, where it's, like, embedded inside the content? Yeah. So I just do it more, not a little bit. Like, make it like a commercial break. Like, OK, like, that's the post. And then also as a commercial break for the thing I'm going to give away, and then back to the content. I'm actually testing putting this in the middle of posts and seeing how that goes, because GrooveHQ tried it, and they said that worked for them. And the last question, uh, or w two, more, two last questions. Uh, first, how would you implement this for a one-to-one -one private tuition business? Pri private tutoring, I'm guessing? A private tutoring. Well, if, are you using uh, content marketing to get leads? Who is this? Are you using content marketing to get leads? Oh, so you're not, you don't have any content on your site. Oh, OK. I see. So in that case, you just want to give something that's more of like the traditional generic thing. Unless you have different landing pages, like some people are landing from Google, like tutoring for foreign languages, tutoring for math. In that case, you want to be like, here's a free report, 10 tips to hire a math tutor. And then the other one would be 10 tips for hiring a language tutor. Just tailor it a little bit. And the last question. 
if your upgrade is targeted to the content, do you also target your follow-up emails? No. Because for the most part, like someone who's good landing on a page about YouTube SEO and then landing another one about on-page SEO, they're pretty much the same person on a different day. So I don't really segment that much. Well, thank you, Brian. Sure. <laughs>